For his first illusion tonight, the magician will demonstrate one of the classics of magic. It dates back to the days of Houdini, when nearly every theater in the country featured live stage magicians instead of movies. Originally called through the eye of a needle, the trick uses these two solid oak wine barrels that are secured into sturdy wheeled stands. We'll get to that large bullseye in a minute. Two of the magician's assistants enter, carrying steel rods. The magician takes one and shows us that the rod is solid, and then threads it through the holes at the front of the empty barrel. He takes another rod and does the same. Now for the next rod. As we can see, these pieces of tubular steel are forming a cage-like barrier across the front of the barrel. Now for the last rod. Again, it's solid and impenetrable. The cage is complete. We now turn our attention to the other barrel and another beautiful assistant. Charming. She moves to the back of the empty barrel and climbs inside. Even more charming. Looks like a barrel of fun. Here's where the bullseye comes in. The two assistants spin the barrel and the girl so that the magician can place the solid steel bullseye over the back end. sealed tight. Another assistant enters with an identical bullseye, again made of solid steel. The girl gives us a wave and the magician seals her inside with a steel plate. It can't be comfortable, but he's had her in much trickier positions than this. The barrels are now secured face to face. The one on the left containing the girl. The one on the right, empty, but caged off by the steel rods. The assistants spin the barrels so that we can see from all sides that there's nothing sneaky going on. From a hole in the top of the left barrel, the girl's fingers appear. The magician has a gift for her, this red silk handkerchief. She takes it. In an instant, it appears through the top of the other barrel. Impossible. Yet, there it is, and there are her fingers. This bears further investigation. Barrels are separated, and there's the girl behind the steel bars, just like a cunning cat in a cage. But how did she get in there? So how did the magician make his assistant travel from one barrel to the next, through the steel plate and solid steel rods, instantly appearing to defy the impossible? Here are the secrets. When the illusion begins, the magician demonstrates that the steel rod is solid and free from gimmicks before he threads it through the holes in the barrel. Notice that he does not show off the second rod. That's the first secret. This rod has been constructed with a spring at the center and two other points, which makes the rod flexible. As he inserts this rod, he's careful to grip it at the center, covering the joint with his hand and preventing it from bending as it's threaded into place. Both of the center bars are designed with these springs, allowing them to be spread apart wide enough for the girl to pass through. Now we know how she gets through the bars, but what about the solid steel bullseye that seals her inside the other barrel? The clever bullseye design conceals another secret. As we can see, there is a circle cut out in the center of the plate. 
This red and white bullseye plug is held in place by magnets. As we see here, the plug easily pops out and into the barrel. As the audience is distracted by the assistants, I mean by the assistants spinning the barrel, the girl inside is removing the magnetic plug and squeezing feet first through the trick spring-loaded bars. This is where practice and a willing assistant are critical. These secret angles show her path from one barrel into the next. It's a tight fit, but judging by her costume, she's used to such things. Once inside, she waits for the red handkerchief, which is the key to selling the speed of the illusion. Remember how it went in one hole and appeared a second later through the other? Here's how it happens so quickly. There's a second handkerchief. Before the trick began, the girl concealed it in her very tight costume. We never noticed, but she had it with her the entire time. When the magician hands her his handkerchief through one hole, she's ready with her smuggled handkerchief, poised to push it through the hole in the second barrel. This creates the convincing illusion that the same handkerchief has traveled from one barrel to the next at lightning speed. Now she immediately replaces the painted bullseye plug. And as the magician prepares to separate the barrels, she quickly stashes his red handkerchief through a hole and into the first barrel. The two barrels are separated, and she appears to have passed right through the metal plate and steel rods. An impressive classic trick. And now you know the secrets. The masked magician will now attempt to perform one of Harry Houdini's most famous escapes, the one that was once promoted with the slogan, failure means a drowning death. The magician displays a large milk can that's been filled with water. This particular can has a bulletproof plate glass window, an aftermarket addition, so that we can see what the magician is up to once he's inside. His beautiful assistants remove the lid, and I think you can guess what's going to happen next. The magician steals his courage and squeezes into the can of water. In Houdini's day, shipping milk in these large metal barrels was commonplace, so milk cans weren't out of the ordinary. However, attempting to escape from one filled with water was quite an unthinkable act. It's a tight fit, but he manages to fit his arms inside and force himself down. The water cascades to the floor. It's real, all right, and wet. Step back, ladies. The magician will take a few deep breaths before he can plunge all the way into the can. That mask isn't helping matters either. He'll test his ability by trying to hold his breath in this very intimidating can. Try to hold your breath with him. His assistants place the metal lid in place. There he is, behind the glass. Remember what I said about drowning? It's important to remember that this is a world-class magician, and at no time should you attempt any of his dangerous tricks at home. The magician is doing a test run of his lung power, only to see how long he can last once he's really locked inside. How about you? Are you still holding your own? He seems to be doing OK, but remember, his hands will be shackled just like Houdini's were 100 years ago. It's nearly a minute now. That's about all he can take. His assistants remove the lid, and it seems like he's happy to be breathing again. Did you last as long as he did? He's shaken, but ready to go on. The extra hardware will make the escape even more death-defying. The magician willingly holds out his wrists for a pair of regulation police handcuffs. Wonder where she got those. Since Houdini was known as the handcuff king, this is only fitting. A few more deep breaths, and the magician is again ready to squirm his way back into the can. The 
lid is returned to its position. And this time, the assistants secure it with heavy-duty padlocks. They'd better hurry. Even experienced divers would find it terrifying to hold their breath while handcuffed and locked inside a cold steel can. Try holding your breath again and imagine that you've got no way out. Not so easy, is it? There we see him struggling with the handcuffs. Even if he smuggled a lock pick into the can, reaching the locks on the outside would be impossible. Houdini was right. Failure could mean a drowning death. He wrestles with the cuffs for a few more seconds. Maybe he needs some privacy. His assistants raise a curtain in front of the can. By now, he's been locked underwater for more than a minute and hasn't made any progress. This is longer than he lasted the first time before he had to be let out. He must be starting to panic. Are you still holding your breath? It's been 90 seconds now and still no sign of him. The assistants better do something. Get him out of there. He's safe. What a relief. I bet even Houdini didn't have a welcoming committee like this. So how did the magician escape before drowning in the old-time milk can? Here are the secrets. First off, the handcuffs look solid, but they've been specially rigged to pop open in an instant. Cuffs like these are almost always used in underwater escapes to minimize the risk of danger. When the magician first plunges into the can, he displaces a lot of water, leaving more room for air to breathe. It's a good acting job, but in reality, he has plenty of space to move freely. The first time we see him behind the glass, we're convinced that he has to hold his breath while inside the can. But check out the lid. The dome-shaped top allows him some extra room to reach up and take a breath whenever he needs to. While we're distracted by his hands behind the porthole, his head is safely above the waterline beneath this dome. Opening the lid to put on the handcuffs only adds more drama to the escape. The lid is locked into place with real padlocks that never get open. They don't have to, because the neck of the can is surrounded by a false collar held on by these rivets. The assistants remove the rivets when they attach the locks. Here we see how easily the lid and the collar are removed. Next, the sheet is raised. The magician can see the sheet through the glass and knows that it's time to make his escape. He simply pushes up on the lid and it effortlessly pops off, locks and all. All he has to do now is climb out of the can. Once the magician is outside, he replaces the lid and stands next to the can, waiting to make his miraculous appearance. girls provide the hero's welcome, and the illusion is complete. First up tonight, the magician will demonstrate a classic illusion that has been performed on television countless times and in live performances all over the world. His assistants do a little dance to get us in the mood. Good job. But no matter how talented they are, he can always use one more. Here she is. Nice. She steps up onto the chair and reclines on a board that is resting between two other chairs. Now another assistant enters. This one is apparently repossessing the furniture. 
The magician places the girl in a trance as his other assistants wrap her in a sheet that was hanging down from the board. Nighty night. Beneath the board, we can see that the magician is standing on a raised platform so we can see him work his magic. He does some conjuring, and the girl rises. The assistants remove the chairs that were supporting the board. She's floating in mid-air. Slowly, the girl continues to rise. The magician motions, and one of the assistants returns with a stainless steel hoop. The magician passes the hoop around the girl once to prove that there are no wires or other supports. She's really floating in the air by magic. He passes the hoop around her a second time, just to be sure, before the assistant takes it away. Now the magician commands the girl in the air to float back down. This is amazing. And we can see there are no wires. He asks the two assistants to return with the chairs. They place them beneath the board just in time to catch it before it floats all the way to the ground. The sheet is removed. And there you have it, a beautiful girl who can levitate by magic. So how did the magician make his lovely assistant levitate before our very eyes? Here's how. When the illusion begins, a board is supported on each end by wooden chairs. The assistant takes her position and is wrapped in a sheet. This sheet conceals the first secret. Hidden behind it is a steel mechanism that is holding up the board. The chairs are merely there for effect. Without the sheet, we can see the mechanism supporting the board and the girl. When the magician steps behind the girl and up onto the platform, his body hides the mechanism from view. But how does he make her rise? The platform contains the next secret. Concealed inside is an electric motor that is connected to a hydraulic piston powerful enough to support the girl. The steel mechanism is attached to the piston, which raises it into the air. The platform's carpeted top contains the next secret. Two switches are hidden beneath the black carpeting. When the magician appears to be conjuring the power to levitate the girl, he's simply turning on the power to the motor. One switch causes the hydraulic piston to rise. The other causes it to lower. With the board attached to the mechanism, how does the magician make it appear that it's unsupported by passing the solid hoop around the girl not once, but twice? The secret here is the design of the steel mechanism. This S-shaped metal tube is connected to the board. On the first pass, the magician slides the ring close to the board and on the inside of the S. When he comes to the end, he slides the part of the ring that is trapped inside the S back around the other side. This frees the ring from the S-shaped support and makes it appear that it is passed completely around the girl. Careful choreography is all it takes to navigate the maze-like support while making it look nonchalant. Since the audience is busy looking for overhead wires, passing the hoop around the girl convinces them she is floating by magic. Even I'm about to believe it. Next, the magician steps on the down button and the hydraulic piston lowers the girl back to her starting position. The chairs are replaced beneath the board, and the illusion is complete. Not so amazing when you know the secrets. The magician will now attempt an incredibly dangerous balancing act in hopes of avoiding disastrous results. He begins by showing off this arrangement of antique iron spikes. These are the same spikes found protecting medieval castles, haunted mansions, and Gothic cemeteries. They're all very sharp and very lethal. In the days of the knights, these spikes were used to impale dangerous lawbreakers and reviled enemies. 
Tonight, he'll use them to perform a perilous illusion with the help of this very lovely lady. She looks pretty dangerous too. Pretty and dangerous. That's a combination that's perfect for a trick like this. He calls in the help of two male assistants in the event this girl is too much for one masked man to handle. As he puts her into a deep trance, the men lift her onto the tallest spike, balancing her precariously on its iron tip. The magician continues to conjure, being careful not to let the girl slip out of her trance. Ouch. The girl has been impaled by the spike. The tip has plunged all the way through her stomach, coming out the other side. This is a case for worker's comp if she somehow survives. Still, even pierced by the stiff iron rod, she manages to look graceful and gorgeous. Maybe this was the magician's plan all along. To stab a girl in the back by magic. What did this dangerous beauty do to deserve such a painful punishment? And is she past the point of no return? Let's find out. The men help lift her off the spike as she awakens from her trance. Finally, the girl slept through it and came out unharmed. And look at that. She doesn't even hold a grudge. Maybe women do like bad boys after all. But just because she survived looking as incredible as before doesn't mean you should try anything like this at home. After all, this was just an illusion, and they know the secrets. We just saw the masked magician place his stunning assistant on the point of an iron spike and impaler. So how did he do it? Here are the secrets. When the illusion begins, the magician displays the collection of imposing looking iron spikes. The spikes appear to be deadly sharp and quite dangerous. But on closer inspection, we can see that the pointy iron tips are actually made of foam rubber. They look lethal, but they're really quite harmless. They're as soft and pliable as a bath sponge or a toy bow and arrow set. The center spike contains some bigger secrets. When the assistant is placed on the spike, it appears that the spike goes right through her beautiful body. But if you look closely, you can see that the tip of the spike retracts into the shaft. When the assistant is placed on top, the point simply sinks down inside the spike, which is really a sturdy hollow pipe. Beneath her costume, the assistant is wearing a special harness that rests against the small of her back and has a socket that fits over the end of the phony spike. Without her fancy dress on, we see how easy it is to make the magic happen. When the men lift her, the magician guides the socket to the top of the spike. From this angle, we can see the moment the tip retracts and the harness attaches to the pipe. While the steel pipe and harness support her back, the girl must use her tremendous abdominal strength to keep her shoulders and legs up. This is the result of hours in the gym. Next, when the magician makes his magical gesture, the girl appears to be impaled by the spike. But how? Hidden inside the spike is a spring-loaded piston which retracts into itself. This lowers the assistant down, creating the illusion that the spike is being driven into her. See? She's actually just going for a ride as the piston slides the pipe down over itself. There is a release cable that runs from offstage to the base of the spike. Offstage, a stagehand controls the action. The girl is loaded onto the fake spike 
and the stagehand waits for his cue. The magician motions, the stagehand pulls the cable, releases the piston, and the spike lowers the girl. If you look closely, you can even see the cable as it's pulled. We're so busy watching the girl being impaled that we don't even notice. But if the girl and the spike are lowered at the same time, how does the tip of the spike appear to puncture her stomach? The assistant has a duplicate spike tip that attaches to a magnet on the front of her harness. See, it's just strapped on. Her careful timing when placing the tip creates the illusion that the duplicate tip is actually being driven through her. As she's being positioned on the pipe, the girl removes the extra tip from a secret pocket in her costume and conceals it in her hand. Notice that she keeps her hands directly above her abdomen until the tip appears to puncture her. This is to hide the fact that she's securing the tip to the magnet. Once the piston lowers and the tip is attached, all she has to do is let her arms fall and reveal the tip. The illusion that she is impaled is very convincing. But how does the spike appear to be its original height once the girl is lifted off? A hidden pedal operates a hydraulic lift inside the pipe. It works like a dentist chair, raising the spike back up. The assistant removes the fake tip and hides it in her palm as she's removed from the spike. All she has to do now is join the magician and accept half the applause for doing most of the work. And now you know the secrets. An industrial wood chipper, capable of reducing whole trees to dust in a matter of seconds. Just imagine what it could do to a body. And here come the girls. No time to imagine what they can do. There's a dangerous escape coming up. Appropriately enough, the magician has a solid pine box in the shape of a coffin headed straight toward the wood chipper's 1,000 RPM blades. You can probably guess what he's got in mind. We know this guy is pretty twisted. Under no circumstances should you attempt anything you're about to see. Sure enough, he heads straight for the coffin. Let's hope he's not headed to an early grave. His assistants are all too eager to help seal him inside the pine box. Maybe he's not so easy to work for. The lid goes into place. The teeth continue to grind. The magician sticks his hands through two hand holes. The lid is fastened with screws as his hands are secured with a pair of regulation police handcuffs, which will make his escape from the coffin even more difficult. I don't even want to think about what's going to happen next. The grinding teeth of that wood chipper are less than 30 feet away. Do you think the magician plans to escape before he and the box are ground into garden mulch? The box is in motion, cruising down the conveyor and directly at the spinning blades. Less than 10 feet to go, and he's still trapped inside. This is too dangerous. His hands are free, but someone better let him out. This is one continuous camera shot. The box isn't stopping. It's being sucked into the steel jaws. I can't bear to watch. The chipper is turning the coffin and its occupant into shreds. So long, masked man. And I didn't even get a chance to thank him for all the laughs. But wait, who's this? Can it be? The masked magician. He stared death in the face and won again. Nice work. Now, show us your secret. We just saw the masked magician survive the pulverizing blades of an industrial wood chipper and escape unharmed. Incredible. But now for the secrets. So how does the magician escape the coffin and the handcuffs before it's fed into the grinding blades of the 220 horsepower wood chipper? There's a secret, but this is still a very dangerous trick. Again, do not try this at home. 
failure would result in a horrifying death. This is a real wood chipper, and the pine coffin is actually being reduced to tiny flakes of wood. But the masked magician knows he'll make it out in time. The assistants use real screws to fasten the lid in place. The handcuffs, on the other hand, aren't so real. That's why he's confident he'll escape before he's chopped to pieces. The handcuffs are rigged to open with the slightest pressure. Here's another look. A quick snap of the wrists, and he's out. The truth shall set you free, and so will phony cuffs. Not very sporting of him, but then again, he's got to minimize the danger. The magician is free of the handcuffs, but still headed for certain doom. But he's not worried since the coffin has a secret trap door along one side. This secret panel allows him an instant escape. Once his hands are free, all he has to do is flip open the door and jump out of the box. A thick pad breaks his fall only seconds before the box is chewed to shreds. A soft landing, safe and sound. And here's the secret to why we never see his escape. Beneath the conveyor belt is a mirror that reflects the ground. We never see anyone walk in front of the mirror like this, so the illusion is very convincing. When you look closely from this angle, you can see the mirror vibrating as the coffin enters the chipper. Of course, you're so distracted by the destruction, we don't even bother to notice. And now for the magician's escape route. He crawls from the crash mat across the ground and along the back side of the chipper. While we're looking at the shooting shards of wood, he's making his way into the cab of the truck. The driver's door is open and ready for his arrival. From the front seat, it's just a short hop into the back of the truck. A black curtain hides the magician until it's time for him to make his appearance. He sneaks out and strikes a pose, offering relief to those who feared the worst. <laughs> 